Living in the last years of the 20th century, we tend to take for granted the modern technology that's made our lives so different from our parents and their parents before them. Out in the Australian bush, technology seems a distant reality. Yet we're just metres away from the most remarkable piece of rural road engineering in Australian history, the Sydney to Newcastle Freeway. The magnitude of its construction escapes most of us. We simply jump in our cars and drive from one end to the other as fast as the law allows. It's taken 40 years of planning and construction for the road to come this far. The early engineers had some massive problems to overcome. The road had to travel 160 kilometres over some of the most rugged terrain on the Australian coast and along the way cross the Hawkesbury River at one of its widest points, as well as many creeks and inlets. Work commenced in 1963. The freeway builders literally moved mountains, and by October 1966, the first section of the freeway had reached Kalga, a distance of some 15 kilometres at a cost of $6 million. 1968 saw the section between the Hawkesbury River and Barara opened. During the construction, Huge amounts of sandstone was cleared from the path of the freeway by an impressive fleet of earth-moving equipment. The cleared sandstone was used in other areas of the work. At one point, the freeway was supported by 1.3 million cubic metres of rock stacked 65 metres high. In other areas, the road cut more than 40 metres into the hillsides. In 1974, the freeway was reclassified as part of the National Highway System and from then on became a federally funded road project. One of the most impressive sections of the F3 was next to be built between Calga and Summersby. It cost $80 million, but it's estimated to save the community $40 million each year in travelling costs. By the time it was finished, 4.7 million metres of earth was excavated, 20 bridges and three major interchanges built. When this section opened in December 1986, a massive 14 kilometres was cut from the old route that wound through Pete's Ridge. And in the midst of all the construction, the environment wasn't forgotten. Wildlife corridors and fences were built to help animals cross in safety. As the freeway continued north, it solved the problem of the infamous Wyong bottleneck, the bane of every motorist using the old Pacific Highway. The Summersby to Wallara Creek section of the freeway was opened in December 1983 at a cost of $47 million. It bypasses Wyong, taking motorists through rugged sandstone ranges, pastoral land and low-lying wetlands. Construction problems were caused by several swampy areas and the need for a very large cutting at Kangi Angi. 784,000 cubic metres of sandstone was removed. The last 24 metres of the cutting was packed so tightly it took double the normal load of explosives to loosen it. From the central coast, the freeway headed west of Lake Macquarie to Freeman's Interchange, a further 26 kilometres which cost $79 million to build. It opened to traffic in March 1988. Twin concrete overbridges were constructed at five local road locations and four separate creek systems including the 191-metre twin bridges over Dora Creek. In 1984, work commenced at the other end of the freeway, the Sydney Link. This 15-and-a-half-kilometre section to the upper northern suburb of Warunga took five years to build and cost $100 million. The opening of the Palmer's Road to Minmai section of the freeway and its associated link road to Newcastle marks a new era in travel between the two biggest cities in New South Wales. It's the last link in the road between Sydney and Newcastle. It's taken five years to build and cost $175 million. And that means if I was walking the full 19 kilometres, it would be costing $10,000 for every step I'd take. 18 cuttings as deep as 50 metres and 23 bridges were needed to complete this section. In all, 8 million cubic metres of earth was moved, enough to fill an unbroken line of trucks between Sydney and Perth.
behind me is the biggest single road cutting ever built in Australia. A massive 1.3 million cubic metres of earth was moved to make it. And that's enough to fill a line of trucks from here to Brisbane. The freeway has been built to withstand earthquakes as severe as the one that shattered Newcastle in 1989 and to accommodate the settlement and stress in mining subsidence areas. More than 25,000 cubic metres of coal uncovered during road building was extracted and exported. This specially designed concrete arch, 6 metres high and 115 metres long, was built to carry the freeway over Minmai Creek. It's the first arch of its kind to be used in Australia. Ever mindful of environmental concerns, revegetation has been given a high priority by the freeway planners. Before construction began, seed from native species including acacia, melaleuca, eucalyptus and banksia was collected and carefully stored. In all, 2.6 tonnes of seed with as many as 40 million seeds per kilogram was collected, then sown with hydro seeding, seed drilling or simply by hand. This area used to be a rubbish tip. It's now been covered with fill taken from the construction site and replanted. In other places, construction fill has been used to create hills. They've also been replanted and they act as effective noise barriers. The construction of the F3 freeway is a remarkable testimony to the men and women involved and to cooperation between the state and federal governments. The F3 Sydney to Newcastle freeway, serving the Australian people with efficient, enjoyable and safe travel for many years to come.